Hello folks, this is Sula speaking. You're listening to another video for Team Fight Tactics. This is going to be another game taken from the Set 5 Revival. Technically it's Set 5.5, but it's basically Set 5. And in this game mode, we're going to be looking at my favorite team composition in Set 5. That is a Dawnbringers team composition. Certainly one that I played a lot back in Set 5. Been trying to get some gameplay footage of this for the Set Revival. And after a couple of different tries, we're going to get to see a, a pretty solid Dawnbringers game here. Now, I've been playing some games of Set 5.5, in part because there's some nice pass rewards in terms of like the in-game loot that you get for playing additional games, in part just because it's fun to go back and experience this a bit. I was hoping that we would get either item payout or the three cost champion start. We don't get either of those. Instead, we're going to get the prismatic finale. So now we know that the last augment is going to be prismatic. Something I always hate in Teamfight Tactics because you can take a game that's been very stable for the first, you know, two thirds of the game. And then all of a sudden it's like it goes into uh, crazy... <laughs> Uh, overturn the board, scramble things mode for the last one. Some people like that, I personally do not. Alrighty, so as I said, I was trying to play a bit of a, a Dawnbringers game. As I said, I was trying to get some footage of it. I played a couple games before this trying, so I was forcing this to some extent. It also turns out that the set revival is not very well balanced. We have some data on the various different team compositions and they are not balanced at all. It turns out that Dawnbringers is actually one of the strongest of these compositions. Now they'll probably put out a patch that will nerf the Dawnbringers because they're they're quite strong, but uh, it's one of the top performing dates in the data. It's like Dawnbringers and Nightbringers are two of the strongest trait right now. And I think that, I think that Abomination is also grades out fairly well, and I think Redeemed is the other one. And then there's some other traits that just do very, very badly overall. So, uh, it, like, I had been playing, I, I did one of the games on live stream, uh, and I was really frustrated because I was doing so poorly, and I had been trying to play through Forgotten and Draven. It turns out Draven is terrible in this current build, so uh, the game is nowhere near as balanced as the main set that's on the live client, and you see some of the augments. There's actually the a Dawnbringer-specific augment that has a 3.1 average finish, which is just absolutely insane. So uh, we're not gonna see that in this game, unfortunately, but yeah, it basically it's not balanced, so play something that's strong. So I'm looking at the different options here. I did think about learning to spell, but ultimately I did not go that way because that's really for a reroll build. Uh, like it would be good in, if, it would be good if I could somehow get karma very early on, but I'm not gonna be able to get karma until the late game. And honestly with Dawnbringers, it's really not an early game team composition. It's a team composition that gets stronger as the game goes on. So I thought about escort quest, but I wasn't sure if I would be strong enough to win streak. So I'm gonna take replication here. And I was hoping that tier would be an option available. I was hoping for either tier or rod. And it turns out tier is available. So what this means is I'm going to get an additional tier each round for the next couple rounds. And that's really good because Dawnbringers is a spellcasting based team composition. Now it doesn't have to be, you can try to play it as a three cost reroll build. There are two three cost units, Nidalee and, uh, who's the other one, Riven, Nidalee and Riven. Um, and they are both three cost units, so you can opt to go three cost reroll and reroll for both of those units and they both deal physical damage. But the way that the comp is typically played, if you don't go that route, is it's a spellcasting based composition that plays Karma as the featured carry and then goes into other expensive four and five cost units later on. And that's the pl plan that I'm looking to go here. I've always thought that that's the more consistent way to play the build. And it also caps out higher if you can hit everything because Dawnbringers, as I said, it's not typically something that's strong in the early game, but it does play an awful lot of strong four and five cost units. So it's like if you can make it there later on, it can be very, very strong. Okay, so I've used my augment to get an additional tier. I already had one tier, and then I was able to combine that together with another tier to make a blue buff, which is one of Karma's key items. Karma's an interesting champion. Uh, I'll talk more about what, more about her when we get there, but her mana cost goes down as she casts more often, and she really, really wants a blue buff quite badly. Really, really wants a blue buff. It's her most important item, and then just more damage after that. Uh, of course, I do not have Karma yet because Karma is a four cost unit, and so we won't be seeing her for a while. Right now, I have the two one cost Dawnbringers on my board. I have Gragas, who is a Dawnbringer plus Brawler. Those are the only two traits I have in right now. He's a good early game tank. He falls off again as the game goes on. He doesn't really do much damage, but he will sit there and tank damage, basically. 
He will fill up his mana bar. And there we go. Now we have two-star Gragas, which is quite nice. I can use him to run my early game. Uh, use him as my main featured early game tank. And um, as I said, he doesn't really deal much damage, but he will fill up his mana bar and then he takes a drink from his barrel and then he'll do like an auto attack that deals additional damage. Doesn't really do uh, that much, but as I said, he can stand up there and soak damage in the early game. And then the other Dawnbringer I found is the other one cost Dawnbringer, and that is Kha'Zix, who is an assassin. He's Dawnbringer plus assassin. And so we're going to be playing through Kha'Zix as one of our main damage dealers in the early game, just for lack of other options that we have available. So he will always jump to the start, the back lines at the start of the game, uh, or at the start of each round. Again, this is set uh, five, so assassin trait was still a thing. He will actually jump to the back lines even if I don't have assassin trait in. And then he will try to get on the squishy carries and try to kill them. And, you know, that's his thing. So it's very important to try to position Kha'Zix in a spot where he will be hitting enemy carries. And in addition to that, he does extra damage if the target's isolated, if they're not standing next to any other units. So uh, that can be very, very powerful. He's actually really good at winning fights that you might not necessarily win just because he was able to jump onto a key target and eliminate them at the start of a fight. So people that are doing a lazy job with positioning, you can sometimes take advantage of them. I won the first three rounds, that means that I have last pick off this carousel. Out of the options here, I could always take another frontline item, which would not be bad. I was actually hoping to get a rod though, because a rod would mean that I'm going to be able to uh, put some more damage on brand. And as it turns out, there's a rod on a brand, which is going to be really, really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that, and then I'll slap this rod on brand. And then this could be a jeweled gauntlet, this could be a death cap, this is going to be really, really nice. And I'm quite happy with that. So as I mentioned, Karma is the four cost unit on Dawnbringers and is typically the unit that you're going to be playing into as the game goes on. But of course, you always have to try to find a way to make it to Karma. And so you want to have someone in the early game hold items for Karma is typically the way that this works. Some other unit's going to have to hold items. And uh, I, I played enough of set five to get a sense for which units are good item holders for her. Soraka can do it to some extent. Soraka is another Dawnbringer unit. She can hold Karma's items to some extent. But Soraka is more of a support unit. She's not really intended to be a damage dealer. And Soraka uh, also has a higher mana cost, so blue buff is not especially great on her. As far as non-Dawnbringer units go, uh, Ziggs can be a decent item holder because he has low mana cost and you can just put AP items on him. He's not bad, but uh, I found from the course of playing this set, the best item holder for uh, Karma is in fact Brand. He also has very low mana cost. I believe his mana cost is 20 and when he casts, it goes down, or when he gets a blue buff, or, or, excuse me, I think his mana cost is 30, and a blue buff drops it to 20, so he'll, he'll cast on two auto attacks. And Bran does a humongous damage over time spell. His damage ticks over 12 seconds, but it does very, very high damage. It's a lot like Malzahar from set 6, if I can go back to another unit that hasn't been around for a while. But it's like a very slow-acting damage over time effect. And by the way, because I have the Item remover, I will of course keep sliding these items around. I might as well make use of these tiers I have. So Brand, even at one star, is going to do something like 800 damage with this ability, but it ticks over the course of 12 seconds, so it's a very slow acting ability. He also will try to put his, his effect on uh, anyone who doesn't already have it, so he will spread out his damage. He will not like focus down one unit, so he's not really something you can use as like solo carry because he won't actually kill things. But he's very good at applying damage to a lot of targets. This fight was kind of sad because I hit someone who went to level six and had uh, they had already they, they went down to zero gold to go to level six and preserve win streak. Now it definitely worked out for them. So like kudos to them for doing that. They made an aggressive play and it worked out and they preserved the win streak. But I only had one in three odds to hit them. I could have hit two other players. So it was kind of rotten luck that I hit them there on that round. I could have easily hit two other players and I'm confident I would have beaten either of the other two players. But no, I have to hit the person who goes level six on two se on a stage two six going down to zero gold in the process and ending my win streak so that was kind of sad there uh, as far as what I was doing I did pick up some Callistas here earlier and the logic for that was if I had found an early Nunu I could have put abomination trait in play which would have been really nice I would have just taken out the I would have taken out the Sejuani and I would have played Nunu and then I would have had abomination trait in which would have been fun Instead, I do not find that. I get two swords here, and then I also get another brand. So this is really nice. I'm going to get brand two-star. There you see I've got the 
Brand two star, and then I hit the the uh, the what's his name, the Ziggs two star as well. So I'm gonna take these swords, which again I have very little use for in my board. I'm gonna make two spears of Shojin, and then this is gonna be not useful for Karma, but it's very useful for other units I might want to play into. I can put this on. Uh, I can put this on like a uh, Heimerdinger later on. Heimerdinger is a great user of spear of Shojin, so I'm happy to have this. Just try to put him on here, and I would love to play into Heimer later on on my board. Um, I have it on Ziggs right now. It's not bad on Ziggs. And I also have it on Kha'Zix. I mean, it's a little more wonky on Kha'Zix, but you do want Kha'Zix to cast more often. He has relatively high mana cost. I think his mana cost is like 90 or something like that. So putting the Spear of Shojin does cause him to cast more often. And like, again, I want him jumping into the back line and assassinating these targets. Again, he does like double the damage if he's isolated in these fights. So it makes a very big difference indeed. And like he's my top damage dealer in that fight. So I have Kha'Zix for single target damage. All of Kha'Zix's damage is single target. And then Bran will like spread out his fireballs to the whole enemy team. And hopefully together the two of them can kind of make this work. Second augment is silver. So I'm looking at the different options. I don't really love anything. It's definitely not featherweights, maybe silver veil, but I don't love these options. So I just opt to gamble and take the random item. And it turned into a gargoyle stone plate, which I'm reason I'm pretty happy with that. Like that's not going to be bad at all. So we can just use that as another frontline tank item. And it's going to make Gragas a lot tankier. By the way, I've also found a fiddlesticks in the shop. Now fiddlesticks doesn't make any traits, but I'll go ahead and put him on the board because he's a four cost unit. Has a lot of really good traits. Abomination, Revenant, Mystic, and I will be playing into some of those traits later on in this game. So I'm like, alright, I hit this unit early on, let's just slap him on the board, see what he can do for the time being. And uh, definitely I can make use of an early forecast like that. Now, again, if I can just find a Nunu, I can take out the Sejuani and play Nunu instead. And then I'd have Abomination trait in, which would definitely help me. I could even move like one or two of these items over to... The, uh, uh, what is the name? The Abomin- I could even move some of these items over to the Abomination unit so they would go on to the Scion, but, uh, I would have to find a Nunu for that in order for that to happen, so. And then this person is apparently, like, not even here in the lobby, so I don't know what's going on with them, but I just get the free win, and that's fine with me. I can start another win streak, but I do wish that, uh, I hadn't hit that player. That person, Exons, is still on full win streak, so again, kudos to them. Uh, they're actually still behind me economically. They're level 620 gold. I'm level 640 gold. So even on the full win streak, they're still behind me economically, which is, this, or I'm, I'm on a level 630 gold. So, um, yeah, I'm still in pretty good shape there. While we've got a second here, let me go ahead and cover what the Dawnbringer trait actually does, because it's the feature trait in this video and I keep talking about it. Dawnbringer is a very creative trait. I think it's one of the best design traits of set five. It does two things, or, well, it's, I guess it is two things. It's a heal and a damage boost. Here's the official description. Once per combat at 50% health, Dawnbringers rapidly heal. When this occurs, all allied Dawnbringers gain 10% bonus damage. So when they hit half health, they'll rapidly heal a whole bunch of missing health. And then the team-wide Dawnbringers will gain a 10% damage bonus. So as you play deeper into the trait, the heal goes up. It is in this patch version, they'll probably tweak this. In this patch version, it's 30% at Dawnbringer 2, 55% at Dawnbringers five, uh, 4. Uh, and then, of course, all allied Dawnbringers gain 10% bonus damage. So... It's really interesting in the sense that on the one hand, it's like a healing trait. So you think, oh, you want it for like frontline units. But on the other hand, when that heal goes off, it also gives a damage bonus to all Dawnbringer units. So as you play deeper into the trait, that damage bonus gets more and more significant. You know, 10%, 20% damage isn't much. But if you have Dawnbringer 6 in, you know, 60% damage for every Dawnbringer on the team, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, and of course the heal gets higher as well. So it's a cool trait in the sense that you can, you know, uh, kind of flex the trait in for just a handful of units, or alternately you can look to play very deeply into the trait if you want to and go and uh, get benefits from that regard as well. So as I said, it's a really cool trait and I think it's one of the best traits of the set. So I'm pretty happy with, uh, I've, I've always enjoyed playing this. And uh, just on another note, I love the way the trait looks aesthetically as well. So many of the units in set uh, in set five had, I thought, really unappealing aesthetics, like just the way that they looked. For example, the Nightbringer units tend to, like right now I have uh, Sejuani on the board who's a Nightbringer. They use like this dull red, red kind of purple, gray color palette. Like the Sentinel units all kind of like have this gray color. Forgotten has like this ugly green color and Abomination units kind of have like this ugly 
greenish color too. But the Dawn Ring units are like this very bright and sunny blue that's just a very attractive thing to look at. Now, I, I realize that that's like a very minor thing, but I always feel like it always makes me feel good to click on the Dawnbringer units in the shop. And I do think that that's actually part of the reason why I never played a lot of Nightbringer comps is like, look at that Yasuo portrait art down there. That just is like ugly and unappealing. <laughs> so a very minor thing, a very trivial thing, but uh, I, I just enjoy playing this trait. I always, I always thought it was fun. And in addition to that, uh, there's a lot of room for like subtlety and creativity in terms of how you build it because, you know, you can go... Vertical Dawnbringers, if you can get an emblem to play Dawnbringers 8, then that can be quite strong. Alternately, you can, you know, run four Dawnbringers, you can run two uh, and flex in other units. Like, there's a lot that you can do. All right, it's time for our Radiant item. I don't really need a Radiant tank item. I don't really get a Radiant tank item. I guess I could have done Radiant, um, what's it called, uh, Dragon's Claw, but they've nerfed Dragon's Claw so much that item is really not that good anymore. And the others are mostly AD items, but that makes this a very simple call. I'm going to go ahead and take the Jeweled Gauntlet, which I'm going to be quite happy to pick up here. So I have Blue Buff now, which is the mana generating item that Karma needs. I have a Radiant Jeweled Gauntlet, so now her spell damage can crit. And then uh, I've got this Rod left over, so if I take one more item, I can put it on her. I could always make like a Morellos, which I don't think would be bad in this situation, but I'm kind of holding out hopes I can get another Rod for Death Cap, so I just have absolutely insane damage the 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 blue buff plus radiant jeweled gauntlet plus death cap would be an absurd amount of damage by the way i'm up against exon's board again so if i can win this round it's really important to end their win streak so it looks like i did just barely win that fight so now they're not on full win streak anymore and i hit them on the last round of stage two and the last round of stage three so we've kind of got this duel going on here but um, i'm quite pleased with this now i'm back on full win streak again uh, it's a shame I lost that, again, a shame I lost that one round where I'd be on a 10 match winning streak here, but I can't complain too much. I'm already level 7 at the end of stage 3, uh, 95 health banked, so that's, again, excellent, and uh, I, I love the items I have for Karma. I have some good frontline tank items here. Now I just need to get up to level 8, and then we'll try to find Karma and decide where to go from there. So I'm going to pick up, what is this, a vest here. That's not quite what I want, and then another belt as well. One thing about the belts you have to keep in mind is uh, belt plus spatula is the recipe to make a Dawnbringer emblem. So I was thinking here, I was like, do I want to make a Morellos? Because I was like, ah, it's not bad, but I do already have a Sunfire cape. So there's a little bit less need to make Morellos here. So I go ahead and do the Warmogs. Warmogs has very good synergy with playing a Dawnbringer's board because remember that the heal from Dawnbringer is a percentage-based heal. You heal for a percentage-based amount of your health based on um, the health that you're... When the units hit half health, they heal for a certain amount. So, you know, right now, Dawnbringer 2 is the only thing in. That heals for 30% when a unit drops down to half health. But, um, you know, that will go up. If I play into Dawnbringer 6, that'll go up to 80% heal. So, like, that is pretty significant. This fight, though, this one's kind of sad because um, my brand gets hooked at the start of the fight by that Thresh. And then the Misfortune on the other board decided to uh, use her cast on Brand, so he dies like instantly in this fight. This person's doing a reroll Forgotten board with Learn to Spell, which, uh, you know, would not be terrible. It's just in this patch, it's not especially good. Maybe it'll be better in the next one. Now it's time for our third augment, and we knew that this would be uh, prismatic because of the initial portal. Looking at the different options here, nothing really stands out, so we'll just take New Recruit and let us play an additional unit here. And I'm also going to level 8 now, so I actually get to play two additional units. And there's Karma, so I'm quite happy with that. I will definitely put her on the board. And I was like, do I want to move my items over from Brand? I think that I do. I could also put this, uh, what's her name in? This uh, uh, Diana for Nightbringer trait, but I'm planning on dropping Night, uh, the Nightbringer trait, and then I get some more hits. I'm going to find the Ivern, who's going to be really big for my board, so we'll go ahead and put him on the board. Ivern is a, a unit that gets played in like a billion different team compositions here in set five. Uh, he just has too many good traits. This is actually kind of a failure of design, is Ivern has too many good traits. Ivern has the Revenant trait, which causes the units to come back when uh, back to life when they die, and he ha uh, at, at, at a smaller amount of health, but they do come back when they die. He also has Invoker trait, which is a trait that gives the team additional mana generation, and he has Renewer trait, which gives Renewers, uh, uh, what is it, mana and uh, health regeneration. 
it's mana regeneration if they're at full health, and then uh, health regeneration if they're not at full health. So he has three really, really good traits, and he's an awesome support unit. He puts Daisy on the board to tank for you. Um, and So he has three awesome traits, and he's a four cost, and he's a support unit that can fit into almost any board imaginable. So this was a real mistake in terms of the design of this set. They put too much stuff into, uh, they put too many good traits on Ivern. You'll notice that in the current sets, the units that are three costs, or the units that have three traits are almost always two costs or three costs. Like, they no longer do units that, um, and, and here I'm going to go up to the six Dawnbringers. I'm going to drop the Brand and the Ziggs, who are really good up to this point, but I, I don't need them anymore. And then I also have um, uh, the Nunu finally on the board. So I'm going to put the Nunu in, but like it turns out that I sold the Brand one round before I got the Nunus. I was like, uh, yeah, I probably should have, uh, maybe I should have waited to <laughs> sell the Brand, because I could have had Abomination trait in here, unfortunately. But uh, I now am not going to have that, but uh, oh well, it is what it is. So anyway, just to finish up that point, as I said, the modern trait design, they don't put three traits on four cost units anymore because the units are just too good. And it was a running joke throughout this set that everybody wanted to play three units together. You would always play Heimerdinger, Ivern, and Volibear together because all of their traits synergize so well. And uh, they were referred to as HIV. <laughs> Heimerdinger, Ivern, Volibear, because they were like cancerous to the game. <laughs> but yes, the infamous HIV for playing these units. Anyway, I hit a lot of good stuff there. I hit the Karma. I was able to hit Ivern, and uh, I'm pretty happy with what I've got here. Again, I would have taken a Rod here to make a Death Cap for Karma. That's not an available option. So we won't have that available. But uh, now I'm looking to see what else I can do here, and I'm like, all right, well, out of these options, I don't really love what's left over here. Let's just go ahead and take some more Frontline. I can go ahead and combine this with that leftover, uh, whatchamacallit, le leftover vest, and then I'll be able to make a gar another Gargoyle Stone Plate, which is seen as being one of the top tank items right now. And then, oh, hello, there is Heimerdinger showing up at the 3% odds, so we will absolutely play that unit. That will cost me six Dawnbringers, but this unit is so good, I have to play this. So the logical unit to take out here is the... Uh, the Kha'Zix, and I can always put him on the board later. And remember, I had that Spear of Shojin. We'll just go ahead and put that on here. And uh, I also can even take the second Spear of Shojin off the Ivern. Ivern doesn't really need a Spear of Shojin. Like, I can just take this off the Ivern and put it on Heimer and just have him do double Spear of Shojin. And remember, I also have that Duplicator on my bench as well, so I could look to, if I can find, like, one more Heimerdinger, I could look to duplicate it and go from there. But uh, Heimer's just a great unit too. I mean, he's a five cost unit. He's Renewer plus Draconic, and then he has his own unique trait, Caretaker, which means that he puts that turret on the board. He has very, very high mana cost, but um, he puts that turret on the board, and when his mana bar fills up, the turret fires that enormous three-shot fireball spread. And uh, yeah, so that's <laughs> that's something that's going to make him quite powerful. Now, you might have noticed I looked at this other board here, Gross to Sky, or Crossed Sky, I don't know why I thought that was a G for a second, cross sky. And that's because this board has fallen under 40 HP this round. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out what the Radiant Blessing is going to be. This is something that happens here in set uh, 5.5. I actually hate this, and I'll talk about why more later. But when you fall under 40 HP, everybody gets some kind of a drop in this game. And look what it turns out to be. It's going to be a duplicator, a, an item component, and a spatula. So it's going to be, everyone is going to get a spatula when they drop under 40 HP. So now I need to be thinking about that and, and having that as part of my planning. I actually should have looked when that first person who was AFK in the lobby, I should have checked when they went under uh, 40 HP, but I didn't remember to do that until we hit this point. I, I think I just didn't expect someone to get knocked out on like stage three. That player died so early because they were away from computer. So anyway, everybody gets this. The official name for it is the Radiant Blessing. Uh, the community name for it ended up calling it the Stimmy. And that's kind of the name that stuck. So that's kind of how everybody calls it, even though it's not the official name, as these things often are. And it's different in every single game. There's like a list of different possibilities that you can get. And I, I really do not like this, by the way. <laughs> Uh, it's one of my least favorite mechanics that they've ever done, and uh, there's two reasons for that. One is, and the main one is, it highly incentivizes loss streaking. It enormously privileges people who drop under 40 HP early in the game and then get the additional benefits. So, like, it is a massive, and I mean a massive, comeback mechanism. I'm like, why should people that are losing the game get this enormous reward for playing poorly? Because, like, there are people that are under the 40 HP right now, and so, like, they're going to have that spatula and that duplicator 
and that extra item for like round after round after round. I'm clearly not going to go under 40 HP anytime soon. So they're going to get that benefit massively earlier than I am. And it's just like an incredible comeback mechanism for people that are losing the game, which I really don't like. So as I said, this highly incentivizes losing rounds and um, making a big comeback when you're already low on HP, which is something I don't like. Now, I was hoping that there would be a uh, belt here because uh, remember, I'm going to get a spatula and I need to make something with it, but there is something I can get and that's a leftover tier. So one possibility that I can do is uh, there is a recipe to make a renewer emblem. And that is if it's spatula plus a tier, I can make another unit into a renewer. I'm kind of at the awkward three renewer right now, but I also don't want to take any of these units out. Like uh, I'm getting renewer from Heimerdinger. Obviously I want him. I'd actually like to get some more AP for him. Oh, and by the way, I don't know what happened here. Apparently I'm hitting no one. I think I was like supposed to get a ghost round, but the game bugged out in some really weird way. Yeah, that's uh, that player, I guess, is the eliminated player. So anyway, I just faced no one. I have no idea what was going on here, but apparently my board won against nothing. I've never really seen this error before, but oh well. But anyway, just to get back to my point there, I'm at kind of the uh, uh, the awkward three renewer here, but I don't want to take out the, I can't take out Soraka. Uh, like she's a very useful support unit. I don't want to take out Heimer and I don't want to take out Ivor and all of those units are too good. But uh, you know, now if I drop under 40 HP, I'm guaranteed to get the a spatula. I'll combine it together with that tier. I can make someone else into a renewer. Uh, it wouldn't be Karma. Maybe it would do like Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks wouldn't be bad. Get some additional mana generation on him. I do have the two-star um, Nunu now. I've kind of two-starred everything except Karma, and then I guess Nidalee and Riven, but Nidalee and Riven are just in there as trait bots for Dawnbringer traits, so I don't really need them. I actually could take one out and play another unit, but I haven't really found something else I'd want to play over them. So just keep them on the board right now. Plan now is get to level nine, and then we'll stay at level nine for a while. I've got a duplicator, so I can look to duplicate something. And then we'll just look to play, you know, more in four and five cost units and go from there. Alternately, you could say try to stay at level eight and try to three star karma. And honestly, that would have been another plan to, is I could have just stayed at level eight and rolled for three star karma because I have a duplicator on my bench now. And remember, I'm guaranteed to get another duplicator when I drop under 40 HP. So I would only have to find seven karmas and no one else is playing karma in this lobby. So it's not like she's contested. That would be the more high risk, high reward play is trying to find a three-star karma. And uh, it, that actually is something that wins a lot of these lobbies here in this uh, set revival mode is going to, is like uh, trying to three-star a four cost. A lot of the games typically do that, but uh, it's I, I do think it's, it's a little bit more conservative to go to level nine and just try to play five costs because if someone else hits a three-star four cost, then it's gonna be hard to beat them, needless to say. So uh, I'm taking the path that's like more gu more guarantees like a top two or three finish, but makes it somewhat less likely I'm going to finish in first because if someone else like high rolls, then they're more likely to jump over me and uh, end up getting a first place finish. But I'm trying to play this more like a normal game and not like a crazy, disgusting lobby loot, <laughs> loot portal game, which is what uh, this game mode sometimes turns into. The game I did right before this one the uh, the Stimmy actually gave everybody three tacticians crowns, which is completely ridiculous. Three tacticians crowns? Are you kidding me? I mean, that just makes like a mockery of the game. It just turns the game into like Mario Party mode, so I don't know what to say. I really am not a fan of this, as I've said before. Um, anyway, so for this round, we're up against the Abomination. And do we have enough damage to kill this thing? It looks like we barely do. Uh, I would like to get this person out of the lobby because they're on low HP. They actually have five Abomination in. They have uh, all four of the Abomination units plus an Abomination emblem. So yeah, that definitely made their board pretty strong. But the good news is they're almost dead. They're only on 13 HP. So uh, half the lobby is like basically dead at this point. <laughs> now it's time to pick another item here. There's not a ton that I would want. Maybe the Morellos would not be that bad here. I wouldn't necessarily mind that. There is a Heimer here as well. I could just take the Heimer and then uh, duplicate the Heimer for Heimer 2-star. And honestly, that might have been the best choice here. I was really torn on what to take, so I ultimately ended up taking the Steadfast Heart. I think if I had to do this again, I would have just taken the Heimer and duplicated it for Heimer 2-star, just because that would have put a lot of pressure on the rest of the lobby. Uh, even though the uh, Last Whisper is completely useless in this team composition because I deal all magic damage, I think I thought that I would just hit a Heimer here at level 9. But like, look at my roll down. I'm not really hitting 5 costs. There's an action. I can't really play that unit. And then there's a Gwen. I was like, okay, well, I want to play Gwen. Gwen's really, really overpowered 
in this patch. And then there's a Garen here, so I definitely need to play a Garen. I need to put Garen on the board. So I want to play him over something, but I'm trying to figure out what I should play. And it's got to be either the Nidalee or the uh, Riven coming out. And I don't manage to get that in time. So that was not a... I mean, given that I had like 30 gold to roll with, that really wasn't a great roll down there. I did hit Karma 2-star. So that's pretty big. I did get the time with Karma 2-star. I found one Garen and I found one uh, Gwen. So again, not, not bad. But I think I could have done a lot better there. I really wasn't seeing much in the way of 5 costs. Uh, what is it? Oh, the odds are only 10%. I thought that they were like 12%. Did they lower the odds of the 5 costs at some point? thought they were 12% to get the 5 cost. They've steadily lowered those odds over time. But needless to say, though, my board definitely did get stronger here. And um, I think that what I should have done is I should have just looked to go down to 4 Dawnbringers. I was trying to get 6 Dawnbringers in. But in order to get to 6 Dawnbringers, I would have to take out units like Gwen and the, uh, um, whatchamacallit. Uh, I'd have to take out the uh, Fiddlesticks. And I really don't want to take those units out. So you can see I'm on the five Dawnbringers, but I really should probably just take out the Nidalee. Now I hit Nidalee and Riven, so I could look to play either one of those. So we'll sell the Kha'Zix. We're clearly never going to play Kha'Zix again. But uh, I, I, like, I'm like i just looking at the options here. So there's Riven 2-star, but I was like, okay, now I want to get the six Dawnbringers in, but what do I take out? I don't want to take out Heimer. I don't want to take out Gwen. I don't want to take out Fiddlesticks. I don't want to take out Ivern. I guess I could take out the Nunu, and maybe that would have been the unit to take out here. So, I don't know. It's a it's kind of a tough decision. Again, this is part of the reason why I like Dawnbringers is you you get these really kind of tricky decisions about what to play and there's so many of the late game units you can play with the board. Uh, we're still looking for Volibear. We're going to replace the uh we're just going to straight up replace the Nunu with Volibear. And by the way, this person's board is almost gone. Let's see if we can take them out. There we go. And they're out of the lobby. So now we're down to just three players and these other two people are hitting each other. So hopefully one of them we might be able to actually be down to just two players here. Uh, who's going to win? The Abomination players won. No, okay. They actually beat the Hellions player over there. So now that Hellions player is going to get the uh, Radiant Blessing. So now everyone in the game has it except for me. So great. That's that's great. Now I just have to play the game without anyone else having the... without With everyone else having the Radiant Blessing, but me not having it. So that's, that's fun. Uh, and then, you know, of course, I can also try to three-star, you know, a four-cost. So I should probably pick up, like extra Karmas or extra Iverns or extra Fiddlesticks or whatever. I might as well just grab these as long as I have the Econ. But my highest priority is just trying to uh, two-star all of my five costs right now. Like, I really want another Heimer. I really want uh, one more Gwen. And there's another Nunu after I just dropped playing Nunu. I really want more Volibears, etc. All right, so there's another Fiddlesticks again. Like I said, I do have that duplicator. Now it's time to pick up another item, and I wasn't quite sure what to get. I think that the Nasher's Tooth is actually a pretty big mistake here. Uh, I think it might be better to either get an item for Gwen or put an Ionic Spark on someone. Like, Ionic Spark would be really good on Gwen because I need a way to um, cut through enemy uh, magic resistance. Also, I probably should have picked up the Teemo. I think the play here was to pick up the Teemo and then just play the Teemo over the uh, Nidalee and drop down to four Dawnbringer. That would put me on the awkward three Invoker, which is not something that... I would be on three Renewer, three Invoker, which is kind of awkward. But again, Teemo is just a really good unit. And in particular, Teemo punishes clumping super hard. Volibear does the same thing, but Teemo also punishes clumping really, really hard. So Teemo tossing his mushrooms would be really good against this board. Now, it looks like I'm probably going to beat this board anyway. But still, Teemo would have been quite good to have here. So I think Teemo would have been a good option. He doesn't even cost any gold. He just costs uh, health. And then also that other person lost. So, I mean, it looks like the game's going to be over here anyway. Like, it looks like I'm just about done. So I'm just rolling it down here, trying to see. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the last round of the game. I still have the duplicator. So I was like, all right, you know what? Let's just duplicate the Garen because it looks like this is going to be it. And then uh, I'll sell the, oh, I sold the Fiddlesticks to try to get more income. Again, looks like this is going to be it. All right, I'm still not really finding the five costs. I really wish I'd found another Heimerdinger, but I'll go ahead and put the uh, duplicator on the Garen. And I was like, this will just be the end of the game. Like my ghost beat this other player last round. So I was pretty confident that I would win this. And then that would just be it. I mean, they're playing a Hell Their board is uh, six Hellions, three Skirmishers. They have a Skirmisher emblem on the Tristana. So I really wasn't expecting a whole lot from this board, to be perfectly honest. And I thought that what I had was quite a bit better than what they had. But I do still only have the Heimerdinger 1 star. And the cannon on 10% HP runs into my backlines and kills both Karma and also kills Heimerdinger, like right when they're about to cast. So I was like, 
All right. Well, that was a little bit unlucky, but okay. I mean, I guess so. Um, they're on, and they're trying to get to level nine, as far as I can tell. So anyway, there's Gwen two stars. I was like, okay. By the way, there's also a fiddlesticks there. So if I'd had the fiddlesticks, uh, if I'd been continuing to hold fiddlesticks, that might have been better. And like, I can do this, but like, is it worth playing six Dawnbringers? I mean, I lose a rank of Revenant. I lose a rank of Mystic. That does not feel worthwhile to make that trade. So we'll just continue to hold here. And at this point, I was like, okay, well, do I take out the Heimerdinger? I can take out Heimer and then maybe put these items over on the Gwen. Maybe that's better. So I'm going to go ahead and try this as well, though I will hold the Heimerdinger that's on my bench here. But like these items are not really great Gwen items. The She, she does want a little bit more tankiness than what we've got here. I should say that Gwen is a five cost that's extremely overtuned in this patch. For whatever reason, they made Gwen overpowered. Also, that cannon got off just an absolutely insane ult that stunned like my entire team. Still, it looks like I'm going to win this fight without much difficulty, but uh, Karma's down on low HP. Now we just have to finish off the Trist, but like no one is hitting the Trist. Now can we win this round? We just have to win this, and is that going to be enough to do it? Come on. There we go. All right. So now we win this, but they're not quite out of the lobby. I think if I had like one more unit survive, that would have been it. So again, I thought that that was going to be it, but then... Uh, there's a Teemo on this carousel, and that's exactly the item they want, so they're going to run and grab the Teemo. I was like, ah, great. They're playing a Hellions board, and now they've got Teemo on their board. Great. Uh, so anyway, I go ahead and take the Rel. Again, I don't think that this is quite the right item. I think maybe it would have been better to get something like maybe the Rageblade. I don't really need more Frontline. I think my Frontline's strong enough. There's another Gwen, and there's a Heimerdinger, so I was like, all right, I guess I'll go ahead and lock because I do want the Heimerdinger. I would like to play Heimer on this board. So I'll put the Crown Guard on Garen, and it is a good item on Garen, but I, again, I just don't know if this is quite the right unit. I'm trying to move some of my units around because I don't want to get everybody to get hit by that cannon when he keeps running into the corner. But uh, the problem with clumping up like this is uh, clumping up like this makes you very susceptible to getting hit by Teemo's mushrooms. And as it turns out, now this player uh, was able to get that Teemo off the carousel. So them getting the Teemo is actually a pretty big spike to their board because they're going to be able to take out one of the Hellions. I can't remember which one they took out. I think they took out Kled, but I'm not 100% sure. And now they've got Teemo, who's like another legitimate damage threat. I should also mention that they have the uh, they have like this Hellion Augment that's uh, really, really overtuned. It has like an average finish of 3.5 in the data. So they have like this super overtuned Hellion Augment. So they are going to win that round. I mean, I kill everything except the Trist, but they are going to win that round. I was like, all right, can we can we maybe win this? I really have not had very good luck at hitting the five quests here on level nine. I've rolled an awful lot of gold and kind of not hit a lot of these. So now I was like, okay, I think that I actually do want to have Heimer on my board, but I, I have to play this Gwen. This is a two-star Gwen. So let's go ahead and play this. So once again, now we're back down to the five Dawnbringers. I'm going to move most of these items over to Heimer. That again leaves Gwen with no items, which is probably wrong. These items probably should be on Gwen, but uh, I do think it's good to have Heimer Dinger on the board. Maybe one Shojin on Heimer, the other Shojin on Gwen, plus the Nashers on Gwen. Something like that. I mean, I'm just trying different things here to see what could possibly work and hoping that things will work out. I also should be less clumped than this. I'm trying to clump to take up advantage of Gwen's uh, innate ability, Inanimate, where people that stand near her at the start of the fight get damage reduced. But uh, I, I think that's also putting me at risk of Teemo Mushrooms. Now, again, I kill almost the entire board, but that Trist is still alive. And unfortunately, the only thing still alive for me are tanks. Like, my damage dealers, my carries keep getting sniped by the Trist and by the Kennen and by Teemo. So, uh, really? Okay. So again, the Trist is the only unit left alive. With that Skirmisher Emblem, Trist is gaining additional damage over the course of the fight, but like, we just have not been able to hit her over the course of these rounds. And uh, now this person was able to uh, make it to, what is it? Now we're on stage uh, seven here. So I am going to start spreading out a little bit. At least I'll have a little bit more gold here, but like, again, it's frustrating because this person has been able to take advantage of the Stimmy for like eight rounds in a row or something like that, and I still don't even have it. So like, I've been punished so hard for win streaking throughout the entire game. It just, I really hate this mechanic so much, but if I do lose this round, I will finally, finally get the Radiant Blessing and I'll get to enjoy it for one round, <laughs> all of one round before it finally... Uh, before the game is over. All right, now there's a Teemo here. I should have bought this Teemo. Again, uh, the logical play here is just take out the, the Nidalee, who's doing nothing, and play Teemo instead. I'll move my tank items from the Gragas over to the Volibear. And then out of these options, I was like, okay, let's take the let's take the Thief's Glove. We can Thief's Glove the Gwen. 
But like I easily could have had two star Teemo by now, and uh, it would have cost me some health. But like two star Teemo would definitely have been a, a benefit here. Um, like just the Nidalee is doing nothing. Five Dawnbringer is doing literally nothing. So we should just play another five cost. But now I do have two star um, Heimerdinger with like these really good Heimer items. I have two star Volibear as well. So like I really feel like my board is a lot better in quality than this other board. So I really feel like I should win this. But like these stuns. Keep, I keep getting stunned by the cannon, like, right when my units are about to cast. And once again, it looks like I've killed everything except the Trist. But can I actually finish off the Trist? That Radiant Gunblade is healing her for so much. It's like, ah, oh, now it's down to just Garen and Trist again. I was like, really? I lose this fight again, too? Can we just win this fight? Ugh. So now I'm down to 26 HP. I've lost three rounds in a row. I, I can I can probably lose another round here if I have to. So now I finally, finally, I'm going to get the Radiant Blessing. So, okay. What are we going to get here? Let's see. We are going to get... I am going to buy the Teemo here. So, all right. I get the Duplicator. I finally can make that Renewer Emblem. So go ahead and move this to Teemo. So now I have four Renewer in. I get a Titan's Resolve. That should probably go on Gwen, but then I have to lose the... Uh, Thief's Glove, so okay, now I'm gonna roll down. I really just want one more Teemo, because at this point, if I lose the round anyway, the game's gonna be over. Oh, there's a Teemo, can I duplicate it? Ah, oh, oh, man. So, I mean, I've got two Teemos on my bench, but it doesn't matter, because if I lose this round, the game's gonna be over anyway. So, ah, uh, why could that Teemo not have shown up earlier? Why couldn't I have made the right decision to grab Teemo sooner? Anyway, but I do have Teemo, and his Mushrooms actually are doing a fair bit in these fights. They are an attack speed debuff. And, oh, we took out the Trist. The Trist is down. Now that Trist is not surviving to the end of the fight, we can actually wrap this one up. And that's going to be enough to do it. So, uh, a bit of a misplayed endgame for me, which is why it dragged out for so long. If I had just grabbed the Teemo earlier and just dropped down to four Dawnbringers, I could have duplicated the Teemo to save some health. I could have played the Teemo. And then, that's what the board should have looked like. Uh, I think that I would have won uh, quite a few rounds earlier if I had been able to purchase that unit. Again, I did have some bad luck in terms of picking up the five quests. I think that my luck in finding them was a little bit subpar in terms of the units I wanted to play. But I, by the end of the game, I was able to hit pretty much everything. I had, you know, two-star Garen, two-star Volibear, two-star Heimer, two-star Ivern, two-star Gwen, and then two-star Fiddlesticks, and then I would have had two-star Teemo if I'd gotten that off. So, like, that's what you want to do with Dawnbringers. Play into the four and five costs and just let them take over because they're so strong. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this game. As I said, Dawnbringers is my favorite team composition, so I'm glad I got to feature it again. Until next time, have a great week, folks. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.